So this is part two of the extremely high yield reproductive system review for the USOME Step 2 and the USOME Step 3 so that you can learn all the high yield concepts that are most commonly tested on exam day. And if you like this type of content, please be sure to pop that like button, hit subscribe and the notification bell so that you never miss another video like this. Now let's begin our review of the female reproductive system. Which of the following is the next best step in management in a patient who has a breast biopsy that reveals LCIS? Excisional biopsy. What is first line therapy for premenstrual syndrome and premenstrual dysphoric disorder? SSRIs. Patients with PMDD and PMS are at increased risk of developing which condition? Primary mood and anxiety disorders. What is the most effective contraceptive method? Progestin subdermal implants. It has an efficacy rate that is greater than 99% and it is effective for three years. What is the most likely diagnosis in a premenopausal woman with unilateral bloody nipple discharge and no associated lumps or lymphadenopathy? Introductal papilloma. Which breast imaging is best in a 31-year-old woman with a breast lump? Mammogram plus an ultrasound. So if a patient is less than 30 years old, typically you'll only need to do an ultrasound. But if they're older than 30, you definitely have to do a mammogram. When is nipple discharge considered pathologic? Or what are some features of pathologic nipple discharge? It is spontaneous, unilateral, and persistent. What, what is the most likely diagnosis in a 32-year-old female with amenorrhea, hot flashes, high FSH, low estrogen, and a negative pregnancy test? Primary ovarian insufficiency. So the diagnosis of primary ovarian insufficiency is confirmed through the lab results of a high FSH and low estrogen. Patients with this condition should undergo testing for adrenal antibodies, TSH, karyotype analysis as well. To manage these patients, you typically can give them estrogen therapy and you'd also need to add progestins if they have an intact uterus. If pap smear reveals HSIL, what is the next step in management? Colposcopy. What is the most common cause of irregular menstrual bleeding in adolescents? And ovulation. So typically at menarche, adolescents can experience an ovulation or just irregular periods for one to two years. The treatment for these patients includes reassurance and observation. What is the most common side effect of combined OCP? Breakthrough bleeding. What is the first line management for vulvodynia? Pelvic floor physiotherapy and cognitive behavioral therapy. So vulvodynia is a chronic, which is a condition that lasts more than three months, raw that occurs in the absence of a specific disorder. Which condition presents with amenorrhea? hypoestrogenism and a low BMI. Functional hypothalamic amenorrhea. 
So the clinical presentation for this condition includes strenuous exercise, relative caloric deficiency, stress fractures, amenorrhea, and infertility. So the hormone levels that you suspect to see in a patient with this condition include low GnRH, low FSH and LH, and low estrogen. So long-term consequences of this condition includes low bone mineral density, high triglycerides, and high total cholesterol. Recall that estrogen is typically protective against having high cholesterol. So in patients that are postmenopausal or hypoestrogenic states, they are at risk of having high total cholesterol. The treatment for these patients include increased caloric intake, estrogen, calcium, and vitamin D. Which risk factor is associated with the highest increase in the risk of pelvic inflammatory disease? Multiple sexual partners. What is the next best step in management in a patient with urge incontinence that does not improve with lifestyle modifications? Antimuscarinic medications. So antimuscarinic medications improve bladder capacity and they also inhibit the trusor muscle contraction during bladder filling by blocking ACH release in the bladder. Examples of antimuscarinic medications used to treat urge incontinence include oxybutynin and toltoterine. So this next question is in a true or false format. True or false, left-sided ovarian torsion is more common. False, right-sided ovarian torsion is actually more common. So the reason for this is because the rectosigmoid colon occupies a space around the left ovary. So that kind of limits the room for it to experience torsion on the left side. However, on the right side where it is more common, this is due to a greater length of the right utero-ovarian ligament. So which drugs reduce the efficacy of OCPs? Cytochrome P450 inhibitors or cytochrome P450 inducers? Inducers. So cytochrome P450 inducers reduce the efficacy of OCPs. For example, anti-seizure medications such as valproids. What is the mechanism of action of ovulation induction agents letrozole and clomiphene. So letrozole inhibits aromatase. It also inhibits the conversion of androgens to estrogens, while clomiphene depletes hypothalamic estrogen receptors. What are contraindications for progestin releasing IUDs? Breast cancer, active pelvic infections, and severe uterine cavity distortion. So knowing the contraindications of different contraceptive methods are extremely high yield for exam day. So let's do another one. What are contraindications for copper IUDs? Wilson's disease, active pelvic infections, severe uterine cavity distortion. Which post-exposure Prophylaxis is given for SA. Doxycycline, ceftriaxone, metronidazole, tenofovir, valtigravir, and hep B vaccine if unvaccinated. What is the first step in infertility evaluation? Semen analysis. So infertility is a couple's inability to conceive after more than 12 months of appropriately timed unprotected intercourse. Other diagnostic tests to evaluate for infertility include assessing ovulatory function. So you can assess for ovulatory function by doing a mid-luteal phase or day 21 progesterone level. You can also assess their ovarian reserves. You can do this by doing 
a day three FSH and estradiol levels. You can also do a clomiphene citrate challenge test, antral follicle counts, and antimalarian hormones. You can also assess the fallopian tube patency by doing a hysterosalpingogram. And you can also do a uterine cavity evaluation through a sonohistogram. What is the screening recommendation for a 18-year-old sexually active woman? Annual screening for gonorrhea and chlamydia. What substance causes abdominal pain in primary dysmenorrhea? Excess prostaglandins. What is the most likely diagnosis in a postmenopausal woman with new onset pelvic pressure, uterine mass, and ascites? Uterine sarcoma. So risk factors of a uterine sarcoma include tamoxifen use and pelvic radiation, and the treatment of this condition is with hysterectomy. What are risk factors for gestational trophoblastic neoplasia? Hydatidiform mole and maternal age greater than 40. What is the treatment of choice of vulvar lichen sclerosis? Superpotent steroid ointment. So this is a benign chronic condition that causes thinning of the vulvar skin in hypoestrogenic populations such as, for example, prepubertal girls and postmenopausal women can experience this condition because they are in a hypoestrogenic state. What type of headache is an absolute contraindication for combined OCPs? Migraines with oral. So other absolute contraindications include active breast cancer, active or severe liver disease, thromboembolism, thrombophilia, for example, antiphospholipid antibody syndrome, severe hypertension, ischemic heart disease, stroke, a patient that is older than 35 and smoking more than 15 cigarettes per day, or if the patient is less than three weeks postpartum. What is the first-line contraceptive method for adolescents? Long-acting reversible contraception. Of course, you have to also recommend barrier methods as well. What is the most likely diagnosis in an adolescent female with a single unilateral rubbery breast mass associated with cyclic changes with menses? A fibroadenoma. So this is most common in the upper outer quadrant and it is seen or can be associated with premenstrual tenderness, cyclic changes in size, and is managed with observation and repeat examination. What is the treatment of choice of acute uterine bleeding in a hemodynamically stable patient? OCPs with high dose estrogen. So recall that estrogen promotes hemostasis through further proliferation of the disordered endometrium and repairing the bleeding sites. You can use IV conjugates of estrogen if the patient cannot tolerate oral medications or if they continue to bleed despite oral therapy. At what age is cervical cancer screening started in an immunocompetent, sexually active woman? 21. So you typically stop cervical cancer screening once they're older than 65 years old and their previous tests have been negative. And they usually start screening at age 21. So from age 21 to age 29, you can do cytology every three years and age 30 to 39, you can do cytology every three years as well, or cytology plus HPV testing every five years. If the patient is HIV positive, then you'd want to do an annual pap smear every year until there are more than three normal results, and then you can transition into doing a normal routine testing. 
What is the most likely diagnosis in a patient two weeks post hysterectomy with painless continuous clear vaginal discharge? A vesicovaginal vaginal fistula. So risk factors for this fistula include pelvic surgery, pelvic radiation, prolonged labor or childbirth trauma, and a GU malignancy. So on a physical exam, you could see um, an area that is red and it looks like granulation tissue, so red granulation tissue. What is the first line management for patients with symptomatic leomyomas who wish to preserve fertility? Combined OCP and progestin releasing IUDs. What is the most likely diagnosis in a patient who received ACG treatment one week ago and presents now with nausea, vomiting, abdominal pain, ascites, and bilaterally enlarged ovaries. Ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome. So these patients may present with DIC, multi-organ failure, specifically renal failure, electrolyte imbalances, hypercoagulability, and hemoconcentration. So the workup you need to do include a CBC, serum electrolytes, coagulation studies, beta ACG, pelvic ultrasounds, chest X-ray, and echo. And in order to manage these patients, we want to correct any electrolyte imbalances, paracentesis or thoracocentesis, thromboembolism prophylaxis as well. Another thing I want to highlight here is that patients typically receive ACG treatment when they're undergoing treatment for infertility. Is a vaginal pessary used to treat stress incontinence or pelvic organ prolapse? Pelvic organ prolapse. Other treatment options for pelvic organ prolapse include weight loss, pelvic floor exercises, and surgical repair. What are risk factors for vulvar cancer? Tobacco use, vulvar lichen sclerosis, immunodeficiency, prior cervical cancer, and VIN or CIN neoplasia. And if you want to continue high yield preparation for the USMLE Step 2 or Step 3 exam, then all I have to do is click this video right here. And of course, if you like this type of content, all I have to do is pop that like button, hit subscribe, and that notification bell so that you never ever miss another video like this. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!